Welcome to the second workshop delivered by Astar team within the Polkadot Hackathon, the North America edition. My name is Ivan, and with me today are once again Pierre and Mario. You had a chance to meet them last week on the fir our first workshop. We are all members of the core dev team at Astar. Uh, I am the project manager within the dev team, and Pierre and Mario are lead developers working on Wasm and Inc. projects and development. Uh, Pierre has been working on Wasm for more than one year and previously worked on multiple big DeFi projects based on Wasm and one of the authors of the PSP22 standard. Pierre has joined Aster. He was previously a member of Super Colony and has joined Aster just recently, so we are happy to have him on board. And you had a chance to meet Mario during last week's workshop, which he led. He is our core team member as well, working on Substrate and Solidity. Mario has been is the author of our Aster Pass, which is uh, connecting the Wasm and EVM worlds within Aster network, and uh, he has been recently uh, joined. He recently joined our Wasm and Inc team. So, topic of today's workshop will be how to interact with the palettes within Inc smart contract using chain extensions, and we will be using the example of depth staking on Aster network. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a box uh, ask a question at the bottom. So feel free to ask a question during the presentation. Uh, we will try to answer those, Mario, me. And uh, if something is left unanswered, we can have a discussion at the end of presentation and go back to it. So I'll leave it with Pierre now. Pierre, the floor is yours. Thanks, Ivan, for the intro. So today, guys, I will present to you Dab Staking Chain Extension on Inks My Contract. Uh, this is my Twitter handle if you if you want to follow me. What is Astar Network? Uh, we are a contract hub for Wasm and EVM smart contract built on Polkadot. We are one of the top parachain. Uh, also, we are one of the top in terms of uh, total value locked and most Ethereum asset transferred over. If we if you love our project uh and you want to uh, work with us we are hiring so please do not hesitate to reach us out today workshop uh, first i will introduce dap staking then we will deep dive to chain extension and i will go through two example and of course live coding and deploying on polka.js to show how it works and then having a uh, talking about next steps and closing words. So let's go. What is DAP staking? Uh, it's a herd of uh, Astar network. It's a mechanism that uh, allow any token holder to stake on a DAP. So it uh, incentivize teams uh, to build apps. And a developer who build DApps can get compensated with staking rewards. How it works? Basically, at every block, a portion of the reward goes to DApp staking. And this reward is then divided between operators, which is DAP developers, and nominators, which is uh, token holders or users. There's three main benefits to it. The first one is that. Uh, Web3 developers or so smart contract teams can earn uh, an income. Third thing is a staker can, of course, earn a staking reward and you can uh, stake on the DAP you believe in it. And also, of course, less token uh, circulating means uh, more rare, means higher price for the token. What is uh, chain extension? So the today's topic. Chain extension is a contract logic that extend palette contracts API to add custom contract to runtime interaction. How it works? Basically, it's an interface uh, to use in your contract, and it should be implemented in the runtime as well. Uh, so that's mean each substrate node each parachain expose its own chain extension. So the one you will have on a Shiden or Asta may not be the same that you will have on a, another parachain. The goal of chain extension 
is to expose specific extrinsic of substrate based blockchain at palette level to be used in wasm contract so previously without chain extension you can only uh, communicate with your uh, with other smart contract from palette contracts but with chain extension you really allow your contract to have communication with other palette of the same uh, runtime architecture chain extension as i said referred to both runtime logic and smart contract logic it only allows contract to runtime communication not the other way around so your contract can interact to the runtime but then uh, adding this chain extension will not allow to um, communicate to your contract from the runtime so for example palette dab staking cannot communicate to your contract it's only the other way around in the runtime chain extension is exposed using a function id and in the contract environment you are calling this uh, function id so here i don't see if you can see my my mouse you can so in green you have the runtime and runtime is made of palette so we have palette contracts that hold uh, smart contracts you have palette dab staking that i just explained what is it before and you have for example as well palette assets that manage assets within your runtime sm is smart contract so you have different smart contracts and smart contract use palette contract api to either do for example cross contract call to other smart contract but can also uh, interact uh, via this app api to runtime for example to emit event or to queries uh, context for example queries a native balance of uh, the smart contract or queries a code hash of this smart contract but then uh, your runtime as it made can be made of a collection of palette and some custom palette for example dab staking so you can add chain extension in your runtime uh, that will expose an interface to communicate directly with uh, the palette and then you can add this piece of logic inside your contract so from your contract you call chain extension and chain extension uh, will call the palettes it's uh it's not only uh, querying data but it's also uh, calling extrinsic and really um, basically it's read and write you can also uh, create some storage in a palette what uh, it means like it's not only query you can also modify palette storage uh, with your smart contract so it's really like a calling an extrinsic from your smart contract i hope this is clear so today i will present two ways of doing chain extension uh, i think there is many way of doing it but uh, these two way i think are the one that make the more sense why is because custom environment is the way that uh, is described in ink documentation as well in uh, parity ink repository you have uh, two example of it randomness and psp22 so it's really the i would say the parity ink official way and there is a second way that is uh, using chain extension builder directly uh, it was inspired by the open brush implementation of palette assets uh, and it's how uh, we will integrate it for palette dab staking for astar network uh, in the coming days as well so to add to custom environment first you define your chain extension trait and you add it to a custom environment and you use this custom environment in the env macro of your contract i will explain it after and under the hood 
the ink chain extension macro will create your chain extension function with the builder. So we will not interact with the builder directly. You just define a trait, the function, and then the macro will translate your function to a chain extension builder. Pros to it is that it's easy to use because you just use a macro. Uh, the usage of handle statue and return result ink macro for your function. I will explain it as well. And then you can use chain extension as it will be added to env. You can use it self.env.extension and your function name. There is some cons to it. The first one is that only one chain extension trait can be added to your contract as it, your contract can only have one environment. And as you will create a custom environment to add this chain extension trait to it, then you can only use one. So for example, if you have one for depth staking, one for palette asset, you cannot use both. And also it only works with different environments. So it's not compatible with library like OpenBrush that uh, use its own, uh, own environment. The second way is chain extension builder. So you use chain extension directly. Um, it does not use ink macro at ink macro chain extension at all. Some pros are uh, several chain extension can be used as many as you want. No custom environment is needed. So it's compatible with a library that use their custom environment. So for example, OpenBrush. And you can use uh, the struct function by importing directly to a contract. So it's really easy. You just import the, the chain extension struct to your contract and then you can use it directly. Some cons, it's a bit uh, manual mode to, to implement. So if you are a smart contract and runtime developer, uh, it will be manual mode uh, for you to implement, but then after it will really allow your users to use it really easily without uh, like uh, needed for them to, to go through, through your code. It will just uh, expose a crate and just import the crate and it will be really easily usable. And it's a bit more complex to code, uh, really a bit, a bit only, don't worry. So let's go to the first example. There is, uh, so this for this example, as what I said, it's what is described uh, in ink. It uses ink macro and um, it's uh, well explained in ink documentation. Um, and also uh, there is example in a parity ink uh, repository. So there is full of documentation. First thing, let me share, uh, let me share in uh, the chat, the, the repository I will be start using from now. Uh, so you can have a look right now and after of uh, what I will be doing. So let's go for the for the first uh, for the first uh, for the first example. So here I have uh, I have two folders. So one folder for first example, and one for second example that we will go after, and just a, a workspace. Uh, and right now we only activated first example. So first example is just a cargo and uh, a lib. It will be a basic contract. So the cargo. Uh, really looks like a uh, basic cargo for a contract. So all dependency are only ink dependency. You have scale and then correct type. Uh, Pierre, it's, a little, it's really blurry. So if maybe you can enlarge it even more. It's okay like this. Uh, 
yeah, it's kind of better. It's really big like this. Yeah, but it's readable now. Guys, please okay. comment if you can't see it. Okay. Um, so it's independency, scale, create type, CD, YLib, and then uh, in feature, uh, all ink and scale. Then in lib, of course, as it's in contract, the config attribute, then we should import, of course, ink env environment, ink lang, and uh, all scale. Then we will create our uh, trait for, for DAP staking extension. So we'll call it DAP staking text. Okay. And we will use uh, ink, ink chain extension macro uh, from, from ink. And inside, uh, we should use uh type error code that we can uh use to the type we want so here we created our custom type uh ds error code i will have to add it after um in this example i will explain three different function from dub staking uh so the first one the easiest one i will say the most simple is read current error it's basically just a query that will return a U32 and that will return the current error. If you are at error 15, it will return 15. Here you can see that uh, it's required to have a number here, which is the function ID of this uh, chain extension function. And this number should exactly match with, of course, uh, this number should exactly match the number of the function ID in the runtime. Return result false. So that's mean here it doesn't return a result. So we can uh, deactivate this. And handle stages means that um, usually chain extension return a result. Um, but if it's uh, OK, on, and only if it's OK, it will uh, decode uh the the call so if it's error then it will not decode it and it will be more performant but here as we don't use result and this function cannot uh, error then we can uh, deactivate handle status then the second one second one is read error info uh, it takes one argument error so it's the same error as here and it return an error info of type balance so what is error info um, it's a custom struct from palette dab staking so as uh, all your so here when you when you query the when you call chain extension all your inputs will be scale encoded and then with the return type it will like the call buffer will also be scale encoded so it's really important uh, to have exactly the same struct in your contract and in your runtime so it's basically just uh it will you will get the reward uh, and some reward info, uh, the balance staked and the total locked. Maybe Pierre, just to say, this is just copy paste from the palette. Itself. Exactly. Yeah, it's just copy paste because it's uh, it's really needed to to be the same uh, the same type. So it's better to to have it uh, exactly how it is and of course it should uh, it should implement encode decode and type info so here as you can see i don't use return result because it can uh, it return a result and i don't uh, use handle status 
because by default it's true so it's only when it's false false that you add it and uh, i handle status set to true because this uh, can return an error if for example you try to read an era info for an era that is not uh, yet uh, here for example if you are era 50 and you query era 100 you will get an error so as it can error as it can send error handle status should be set to true uh, Pierre, just to mention that era is basically uh, like like a day, but in a block numbers. So it, it should match if the block number is the same uh, 12 seconds throughout the day, then it will be exactly one day. But it's usually a little bit different. Yeah, it's uh, it's really the era that is used in all parachain. Um and last one but not the least is bond and stake so with this one you specify an account id which is a account id of the contract you want to stake to and a value which is the amount you want to stake and this one will uh, then add your staking to this contract and will uh, add an entry to pallet dab staking. It return uh, nothing because it's only okay if it works or error if it doesn't work. Then we have uh, everything for the for the error. Uh, so sorry, I'm a bit on the right. It's not too big, Mario. Um, so the DS error code. Uh, that we created here uh, should implement uh, from status code and also we use ds error uh, here uh, so we encapsulate uh, the we encapsulate inside a ds error we encapsulate ds error code and of course uh, the ds error we use in chain extension should also implement uh, from scale error but it will uh, it will not compile if you if you do it it's it's in all the example and then uh, as we have right now our uh, custom uh, as we have our staking dab staking trait we need to add it to our custom environment so here is our custom environment and then we implement environment for our custom environment. And basically this is really standard. So this is for all for all environments. And here you can see type chain extension. And here is our our dub staking extension trait. And how to use that in your contract? So we will create a contract uh, here. So mod dub staking extension. Okay. And as it's a contract, you should have add ink contract uh, prop macro on top. And here I specify that uh, the environment uh, here is not uh, the, the default environment by ink environment but it's a uh, my custom environment here which this chain uh, extension then inside my contract to make it compile i should import the zero and era info of course i need a storage but here uh, the storage would be empty because we are really working with a basic uh, contract then i should implement storage struct constructor will be a really basic constructor because we have nothing in storage basic so the to read current era it's really easy uh, it takes no arguments or reference to self, but it's no argument. And then it will return u32. And you just need to use self.env.extension read current error. You can also use um, 
the self Uh, it will also work. It's uh, it's either one doesn't doesn't makes any difference. The second call um, it's read a info. It takes one argument era and it return a result. And you just it, use it like this: self dot end dot extension dot read current era, and you pass era to it. And the, the last one, bond and stake. So it takes uh, account ID and value as parameter. And then you just call a self.extension bond and stake and pass the two arguments. Um, so this okay, maybe just to mention so here is now where we use those uh, 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 types that we imported or copy paste from the palette but we need those types because uh, these functions expect arguments in those types and will return values in those uh, palette specific types you mean uh, era yeah like era info let's say That's why we needed to import uh, those types in the contract from the palette. So now I will show you how it's done on runtime. So here I'm using a swanky node, which is uh, our local uh, development node, which implement uh, Eastern seal and uh, manual seal. And it also implement everything you need to to deploy on Astar, which is palette asset and palette tab staking. We've added uh, local chain extensions, so the three uh, function I described it here. Um, but if you're implementing one for your runtime, first in palette contract config for runtime, you need here, uh, I think by default, it's uh, there is nothing, it's empty, but uh, you need to create uh, a local chain extension struct and then implement chain extension for this struct. Um, so this is uh, pretty much by default. Uh, it's just a call uh, and then it return a, a result of a red val and, and error of dispatch error. And it's a basic match uh, and it will check the function ID uh, and if you try to deploy a contract with chain extension with a function ID that is not existing in your runtime, it will throw you an error at deployment. Um, just to go through current error, basically uh, here um, we call dap staking current error, then uh, we encode it and then rewrite it to the call buffer. And then in our contract, uh, we will decode it and re return the current error. It's just a basic uh, U, U32. Okay, yeah, just, just, uh, just, just a yes. second. Uh, so Thomas asked about this uh, function ID numbers. So Thomas, now, now you can see here it's 3401 and 3402. It's a bit blurry, but this is where they need to match from the contract. Yes. And why we choose right now 34 and the run is basically because DAP staking palette is number 34 and zero run is the number one. Uh, for general era info. So here uh, we pass argument. So we have our environment that is passed pass to the to the call um, and then we read the argument so here uh, this is uh, u32 we pass as argument and then we call dap staking general info and we pass the arg uh, of course it return uh, an option so we need to map, map it to uh, to result so if it's uh, if it's none it will return a, it will dispatch an error but if it's okay we encode it 
and then we rewrite it to the buffer and then it will be sent it to i mean the contract will will decode it and get the error info for uh dap staking uh here uh we pass two args, so I created a bond, bond and stake uh, struct uh, that has type account ID and balance, but you can also use a destructuration, it will also works. And then you decode the color account ID, which is, uh, so the end, you get it in the, in the end, X color, the contract uh, add account ID, which you pass as a account ID argument. Um, then this you just you just need to create. Uh, there is an enum on a, on Astra network because we can also use DAP staking for uh, EVM smart contract. So here we create a WASM contract, and then you just pass it to a DAP staking palette. You call bond and stake. You pass origin sign color smart contract which is uh, just the contract uh, account id and then the value you want to to stake and then if it's an error you return dispatch error and if it's okay you return okay so let's get back to uh, our example so you can see that it uh, it compiled so let me run the node uh, yeah, while you're running this, uh, let me just stress out that uh, if you guys are developing contract, you will not need to do updates on a node runtime. Uh, we will provide all needed uh, chain extensions for you to use. You will just need to know the interface. Yes, uh, here, exactly here, I'm really explaining if you are a runtime and smart contract developer. But if you are only a smart contract developer, in the second example, I will show you how you can use like already created uh, chain extension. So here, uh, please uh, plus plus. Okay. So here I'm in a Polkadot.js. I'm running Swanky node. Let's deploy my my contract. Uh, you can find it, of course, in your target ink and the uh, contract name. Um, so you take the dot contract. Let me go with Salis. Let's deploy, sign and submit. And then here you can already see that the read current error uh, is one. And I can read uh, error zero and error one. But as there is nothing staked, it will only show zero. Um, in order to bond and stake on this contract, first I need to uh, register this contract on DAP staking palette. So that's why I go uh, to extrinsic DAP staking, and then I register. I need to register this uh, this contract. So here it's not Charlie; it's a it's a contract, and then I register this contract. Okay. If I go back to contract and then I want to stake on this contract. Let's use uh, Bob for this. So Bob want to stake on this contract and he want to stake 100 Astar token. Then you sign, it worked. Then let's go to chain state and check uh, the staking of, uh, of Bob. So ledger, so Bob, if I check, he have 100. So this is uh, 18 uh, decimal. And if I check Alice, uh, she has zero. Okay, so we can say uh, it worked. So it was all for the for the first uh, example. Now let's go to the to the second example. So in this example, I will show how to just uh, create a struct, implement a struct, and use a chain extension builder 
directly. And then we will create a separate crate, a contract that will uh, use this, uh, import this tract, and we can use it directly in our, in our contract. So let's go to our workshop. So this one is done. Let me add first. So second example, first we'll create uh, the struct. So the cargo.toml is uh, is really, it's, it's like, a, it's really basic cargo.toml for for a contract. Pierre, please share. bigger. Ah, okay. Maybe yeah, maybe open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's the same ink scale. Uh, but here, create type is not CDI lib, is Erlib. Uh, so use it as a as a library and not as a contract. And uh, everything uh, in uh, features in the lib. Of course, the config attribute. Then, uh, of course, we will use scale. And uh, as we will use balance, I just need to use this uh, this type balance like this. So that's why we need to import default environment and environment. But I'm sure I can. You can uh, use type balance. U 128 can also work. Haven't tried, but uh, this one is like the most generic way. I like generic way. So we just create a struct here. So pub struct tab staking. And then we create impulse block for this uh, tab staking. And inside, uh, we will add directly. Uh, our three function. Um, so here, um, let me explain. So recurrent error, return of U32. So we use in env chain extension uh, builder. Here we pass the number of the function ID. Input is empty because there is no argument we pass. Output, we get a U32. In your error code, it's basically the manual mode of handle status false. And then call, as we don't pass a argument, we just pass a, a reference to empty. For general, for read current error, the same, we pass an error, we get a result. Uh, this is a function ID, so number two. Input here, we pass an argument, so input is U32. Output will get a, a result of error info balance. Handle error code, so here uh, in, we don't ignore it, we actually handle it, and we handle it with DS error type. And as we pass an argument, uh, we, we call it with a reference to error. Bond and stake, it's pretty much uh, the same, but here there's two arguments, account ID and value. And here you can see that uh, in order to, to make it more easy for scale to encode, decode, uh, create um, a custom struct that will uh, hold all the argument and pass uh, to the call a reference to, to this uh, bond and stake input. And of course, this struct should derive from uh, scale encode, decode, and type info. So the number is three. Input, so it's uh, this custom struct. Output is a result of empty error. And we also handle error code with this error. So we have implemented everything from our struct. But of course, we need. Uh, so here we need this uh, custom struct uh, for input. We need, of course, uh, all the two struct 
from uh, dab staking palette era info and reward info and uh, we also need everything for for the error as i told you it's a limitation from chain extension scale error and from status code okay so this is uh this is like the the crate where we have our struct depth staking and inside it has uh three function that we that that use directly uh, the chain extension builder so now let's create a contract i just added to to my workspace so now just create a contract that will uh, that will import this struct i got a more it's as usual on a basic one but here i have added uh dab staking uh that i that i get uh, from here okay dab staking uh, and then of course uh create type is cdvilib which is uh, because it's a wasm blob and uh, don't forget of course to add it to your std features Should be good now. Okay, the lib. So, really, uh, most basic contract. So, configure attribute. Of course, it's an in contract. So, we need to use ink lang. Lang. So, we need to use ink rock macro. Then, of course, a contract is a module. it's taking and then here inside the module we will import everything from dab staking crate so basically what we need is uh, the struct the ds error in them and uh, the era info here i created a custom error because every contract will have his custom error and i encapsulate ds error inside my contract uh, error enum storage is empty just a basic contract and we implement expect constructor is really basic and uh, empty and now let's uh, create three uh, ink message to get our uh, three function so here get current error takes no argument return you 32 and you can see i just use tab staking struct and call directly its associated function read current error really easy and then you the info, you pass error as argument, it return an error at full balance. And then uh, of course, as I haven't implemented uh, from the from trade to uh, basically uh, map directly map this error to of my contract error, staking error, I just use uh, map error so it will not complain. And for for a bond, uh, bond and stake, um, you pass the value. And basically here, uh, instead of passing the contract address of the contract you want to stake to, uh, I will just get the account ID of this contract. So by calling bond and stake, you will basically only be able to stake value on this contract. Then return OK. So this should work exactly as before. Let's compile. Mario, is there a question already? 
I think I addressed all the questions in the chat. No, no chats, no questions under the ask questions. So guys, if you have some generic questions, please open ask a question and post it there. Okay, let's build. If it works, let's go to polka.js. Okay, it's ready. So I have here my staking contract that I just built. I deploy it. Then let's go to palette dab staking and register this contract. So let's go to extrinsic dab staking register and register the new contract, which is staking. Now in my, let's go back to contract, and then I can stake for this uh, contract with bond and stake. Let's take for Dave, let's take 10, execute, sign and send, success. Let's check now, uh, change state of that, Dab staking ledger. So Alice should still have zero, of course. Bob's should still have 100 because he's still staking for the other contract. This is a total number. And Dave should have 10. And Dave have has 10. So all our contracts are working. So it's all for uh, the second example. I just want to add that uh, how we will do it in for dApp staking in the future. We will do it like this in uh, in Astar. So in your contract, it will be uh, really easily. You just need to use uh, our cargo crate, and then you will be able to use dApp staking like this. And we will expose every extrinsic from the palette directly as chain extension. So everything uh, will be available for you. Yeah, and maybe not, not just the uh, dub staking, right? There will be more generic palettes as well, like yes, palette assets and exactly. XCM. Yeah. So, uh, yes, of course. So, next step, uh, next step is. Uh, for dub staking chain extension to have full set of chain extension as cargo crate that you can use in your contract. And we will implement this chain extension in all the runtime, which is a swanky node for test uh, Shibuya, which is a test node and Shiden Astar for live nets. Then we will integrate a palette asset chain extension. Supercolony is working on it. They're almost finalized the implementation. So we will use uh, most probably their implementation. And then probably we'll also implement a palette XCM for contract as chain extension. Just a few words on the links. So we all time use for your question, uh, substrate stack exchange. Uh, we are really active here. So if you have any question, we, you can uh, create a question there. We have a Astar Discord with a dev support channel. Uh, if you have question uh, that concerning Astar networks, we have uh, updated uh, docs. So please have a look. And then Mario created a uh, awesome repo that uh, it's basically a list of all things re related to Wasm contracts. Um, I will I will share it in the. In the chat, I think you already know Awesome Substrate. Uh, this is the same, uh, but only for Wasm smart contract on Astar. And thank you for, for your attention, guys.
I hope you you liked it. Yeah, thanks, Pierre. I don't think there are there are unanswered questions. Okay, cool. I mean, I explained very very well. Yes, it was clear for me. I, I hope <laughs> for, <it's> for everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre, for for uh, pre presenting and uh, for everybody. The it, it's a crowdcast event, so it's recorded and uh, available to to re replay later on. So it's it's here it's here for future reference. And um, thank you all for coming and looking forward to seeing you on the future workshops.